And here we are. We're back. Another week comes. Another week calls. And we are still here. Uh, I'm it's down with Ill. boring. Oh, what are you what are you sick of this week, Jake? Uh, just just got cold, <laughs> really. <laughs> just a cold, actually. Yeah. Not actually sick of anything. Welcome back to down with boring. Well, the only thing we're sick of is the cold. <laughs> the only thing we're sick of is actual illness. Well, I just don't um, want anyone to listen and be like, didn't he used to have a more sonorous? Bass filled voice, mm. but you know, obviously, I'm a bit, bit you blocked might get up. letters of concern coming in being like, Is Jake okay? Is he all and right? The answer is yes, he's yeah, he's fine, just um, just just breathing in some illness, but yeah, we we won't let you down, that's why we're here. We soldier Ooh. on, we soldier on, um, and with that, you're Jake, do excited you... to be here, <laughs> new music, buzzing. <laughs> Really private. Yeah, it's gonna be it's gonna be good. We've got um we've got Ammo and the Sniffers uh joining us this week. I'll tell you what, I'm bloody sniffing with uh, this cold, uh, hey? Jake and the uh, Sniffles, more like Yeah, I wasn't I wasn't there for Ammo and the Sniffers. Um I was at work. Actually. Some of us. Yeah, yeah, yeah. yeah. I, I potter fuck around. around. Yeah. Like you, Jamie. I just potter around in, in the grass uh, mm. and then come no, to talk to bands. Due to a time difference, I was not able to make it, um, what with them being based in Australia. Exactly. Which I have been uh, told is further away than Scarborough. So, (laughs) quite a way. Quite a way. We made it work when I was in Manchester, but this was just a step too far uh, in Mm. terms of time difference. So, um, so alas, but don't worry, I'll, I'll, you know... I'll bring you all the the fire and the heat and the, the, the energy crew, if you will. Um, this is worth noting as well that uh, there's a new issue of Door Count right now. That's why uh, you say that every week. God. <laughs> Someone's got to sell, Jake, uh, until I these just, brand just sponsors come in. I don't, I don't know in. what happens. I, I, I'm like, <laughs> it, you know, another one? Another one? Uh, it's, this a, one it's a good thing, I guess. <laughs> yeah, yeah, it's great. Another month, another another wonderful issue of Dork out there. Uh, Remy Wolf on the cover uh, this week, who we'll be talking about later. You because... said this week that you meant this month, you fucking moron. <laughs> Fucked it. <laughs> Donk. Yeah. <laughs> and we're done. But this week, Remy Wolf's uh, album is our album of the week. Yes. Even when she's this month's cover star on the what magazine. What are we like? What are we like? It's all going on. It's like a double whammy. Uh, the Wolf Pack is back. Um, that The name. Oh, no. Famously, uh, Remy Wolf's uh, fans. Uh, do you remember what they were called, Jake? We talked about on the show. Oh, God. It was something horrible, wasn't it? Rem called, Jobs. The Rem Jobs. The yes. Rem Jobs. Fucking couple of, state of that. Couple of Rem Jobs here, and we'll tell you why uh, later on in the show. Um, Jesus. Glorious. So go pick up a copy of Dork, basically. Um, yeah, do that now. Uh, what else do we have to sell? Oh, yeah, there's Dork's Night Out coming up. You had BB Green last week. Go buy a ticket on Dice. It's happening on the 10th of November. It is. Um, um, anything else you want to sell? Good. Yeah, it will be good. We have a lot, a lot of fun there. Uh, anything um, else you want to sell? Oh, Jamie, you're going to have uh, some mayonnaise in a coffee and let us know how it was. Ah, yes, that's been delayed a week because I don't have any mayonnaise in the <laughs> And house. you don't want to do it. Um, also that. Um, but mainly, there's no mayonnaise. So come back next week when I will be putting mayonnaise in my 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 coffee. Um, uh, mailbag. But, yes, Jake, what's, what, 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 what's occurring with the mailbag this week? Uh, it was, uh, I don't know, given to me by a mystic chicken or something. Anyway, <laughs> it's here... <laughs> Uh, it's ready to go, and Great. it has one letter in it. Oh, from uh, Jeff from Portslade. Oh, hello, Jeff. Uh, you doing well? Yeah. well? He's not real. I just made him up. Uh, <laughs> and Jeff says, uh, "Hi, Dork. Uh, I've got my tickets to the big night out. Uh, would you uh, have joined the French Resistance in World War Two? Um, I'll be frank with you. I'm not." Even though I have a 100% record in fighting, famously, we've discussed on the show before. You don't want to ruin that record. Uh, yeah, it's, it's exactly, you know, I need, I need to, you know, it needs to be a millions, millions and millions to get me back in the ring. Uh, so I probably wouldn't have, I probably would have just chilled at the back and been like, just let me know how it goes. You do you. Um, which is why, Fair enough. you know, maybe I, I'm not suited for combat. Uh, I've been told that before by a few people that, you know. 
push what came to shove. Know? That's what I they say. They wouldn't have me down the front. Um, but there you go, Jeff. Uh, basically, n- got no got no mailbags this week. So please send in your questions. All the usual uh, spots. I wouldn't have joined the French Resistance because I'm English. Famously. I live in would, England. Would that have been allowed? I mean, yeah, travel at the time would, was probably make difficult. Sense, would it? Yeah. <laughs> can't, ima- can't imagine the Germans letting me cross the front line to join the resistance. I, I simply can't join the British Army, but the French resistance. Yeah, go on then. Why not? Yeah, it's more romantic, right. isn't it? The French resistance. I suppose. Uh, yeah. yeah, we got no letters this week, so um, you know, do better. Do better. Uh, that's the cry to all of our live, wonderful laugh, listeners. Love to write letters for the Dork Mailbag. <laughs> As it says, with that I've got catch. that. I've got that on my wall in script oh, really? writing. Yeah. Uh, how was that? Like, what, is that available at all? Like standard Wilco's, I presume. And uh, uh, I other think it's, it was a limited edition at the range. Oh, there was only one, and I put it there, and they removed it. <laughs> you put it there. <laughs> Yeah. Like, sir, what the hell are you doing? I just thought someone might like it. Um, what, take well, it to I the counter? They would, but they didn't. Take it to the counter and go, uh, just one of these, please. And they're like, we don't sell that. And you're like, oh, for free then. Okay. That's the how Pretty you do much, it. Pretty much, yeah. Customer service, always the finest. Um, we're not sponsored by Wilco, any other um, shop. Not um, sponsored by Wilco Johnson either. No, we've tried. Um, doctor, not so feeling good for our wallets. That's all mm. I'm going to say. That's all I'm going to say. Uh, let's move on to some music news okay. because we've exhausted You're the mailbag. You're the boss. Uh, oh, dear. Uh, talking of bosses, let's talk about Adele, who is back. Um, now, here's a little secret, listener. We're recording this on the Thursday evening. Therefore, and would you believe it? Adele <laughs> has not sent us her album ahead of time. She hasn't looped us in with any secret little tracks. We asked. Uh, we asked. I read um, the cover. I read the big interview, and I thought that. Oh yeah. You know, I thought, hey Adele, come on. I read the big interview. The least you can do is send over the album. Nothing. <laughs> nothing. Nothing. Not uh, a sausage. So- so you listening to this will have heard the song, um, and so we are going to, as we do every week, predict, but this week we are predicting the song, uh, which is Easy On Me, which is out now, the big return of Adele. Uh, basically, mm. music as a whole for the rest of the year should probably give up, because this is always yeah, going to be. Yeah, uh, probably. What do you it's think it's going to be, be like? Because she said that, uh, like, it's kind of about, wasn't it about the breakup or the divorce and like kind of helping yes. explain that to her kid? And it's called Easy wow. on Me. So I'm thinking the lyrical content might be about how the divorce was easy on her because it wasn't her fault, it was the kid's fault. Right, that's it. Yeah, that's right. Adele has written a song <laughs> blaming her yeah, child. Yeah. Is that what we're going for? Well, you know, for the here? parents are always like, oh, it's, it's not you. It's you, not you. Me and your dad both love you. Just yes. be like, you're, the chorus is just her screaming, you're a little shit, really, really loud. <laughs> Yeah, I, I'm quite delighted. And also, amazing, you know, we should have known really that Travis Barker would show up in some form. Um, just can't stop him at the moment. So it was great Someone to see him Someone give this up. man's publicist a raise because Please. What, what's happening here? He's about. I mean, yeah, he's good, but like, there are others. <laughs> he's just working hard, you know? Just working it's just hard. like how like, there's unions for like the screenwriter's guild, right? So like you have mm. to be a union worker to work on movies in Hollywood. Is it like uh, this is a union of just <laughs> Travis Barker? Yeah, <laughs> yeah it's like oh, all, other drummers, like, whoa, whoa, all other drummers have left the union. Yeah. So every time you ring up the, the drummers' <laughs> union, they're like, Travis? Uh, we've got Travis, like, I guess so. So I really enjoyed his pop punk drums all over it. Um, maybe there's a Machine Gun Kelly feature on the album. Uh, the album is called 30. November the 19th it's out uh, and and judging by this song cough, it's going to be huge I reckon Jake yeah yeah it, great song and through the power of time we're going to listen to it now so here is the huge drum and bass return of Adele with Easy On Me
See, what's huge. interesting is that when the people listen to this, we will have heard the song. Yes, They'll be listening have. to us saying we haven't heard the song. When actually... You know? That's time travel, isn't it? What a wonderful thing. Would you? When would you like to time travel, like forward to or back to, if you had one opportunity? Or like three minutes from now? <laughs> Great. Well, let's see where we are in three minutes. I've got some more music well, no, news like, for I you now. I travel Jake. forward three minutes. No, I, or I travel back three minutes, right? And then, like, right. I could just finish your sentences, and it really freak you out. That would. So let's. <laughs> now I'm I'm worried now. Um, let's move on to our second no. news then, second which is bit news. Col- Col- <laughs> I hate this already. Col- Coldplay. Oh, Col- Coldplay. Coldplay. Uh, Coldplay. Coming uh, back on tour. Uh, they're doing, uh, they're doing uh, a tour, a, a sustainable and, uh, tour, sustainable tour. No, no. <laughs> Coldplay are doing a stadium tour, which is going to be they environmentally are. sustainable. Uh, yes. So they've had, they've sat nice down since 2019. They said they were going to consider how they were going to tour in the future to make it environmentally friendly, and they've worked yeah. it out. They're going to play. Right. How? Going to be renewable energy. People dancing around is going to help power stuff. Uh, the one thing whoa, they whoa, whoa. couldn't. What do you mean? What do you, of, mean? Oh, what well, do you mean? basically, then? the floor is kinetically powered. So if you jump around on it, they can transfer that into energy. By the That's quite an things. interesting concept because the idea would be yeah, that surely if you just, like, Coldplay were the really shit one night, <laughs> yeah, if they were really shit one night and everyone was like, oh, this is a bit boring, the, the stage would just <laughs> shut off, uh, which yeah, is quite a, an incentive for an artist to actually go for it, I guess. What I do enjoy is uh, that they said, like, you know, we we are still flying by private jet. And they were like... Right. You know, if people then call us out on that, then like, yeah, f- fair enough, because that's not good. <laughs> it's like, right. So, and then he's like, right. and people might say, why don't you just not tour? And like, you know, fair enough, but we want to tour. And I was just like, what? <laughs> what? <laughs> Going to do this environmentally sustainably? Apart from the bits we're not yeah. doing sustainably, and if people call us out on that, then yeah, that's not sustainable. Yeah, great. Yeah. Thank you yeah, for perhaps. announcing you and also ruining us. this thing in one press release. <laughs> um, I'm, I'm going to be a look. vegetarian, about... but I will still be eating beef. Uh, and if someone calls me out on that, then yeah, I guess that's that's not being a vegetarian, is it? So, you know, that's that. <laughs> that's that. <laughs> they've got you uh, do you yeah. like the find that it's like fans who travel to the shows by public transport will be rewarded with discounts um, what's the discount I would argue train travel back also like they're playing like fucking Wembley like who's driving a Wembley they are <laughs> like it's a very you know good I mean? point it's a good point yeah yeah everyone's on the tube already so that means that's a flaw they're gonna have to give out a lot of discounts here um, uh, <laughs> I wonder what he'll get. But yeah, I mean, right, like, is there something. I mean, right. So, in the fourteenth of June, they play Tampa, Florida, and then on the second of yes. July is their next gig in Frankfurt. Like, get a boat, man. <laughs> <laughs> you can do that. That's like it's what boys. two and a half it, weeks. You could actually do Come it. It's, it's manageable. It's manageable. <laughs> so your your issue, your issue your issue here is um they've, they've put a, they've, they've put a lot of work in. But there's yeah, you know, there's arguably the biggest uh polluters, if you will, is still going on. The yeah, planes I just are think still it's flying. a weird one because like you could do a European tour quite easily without flying. Yeah. And like they're like, yeah, Oh yeah. yeah, but we really want to tour the world and it's like, okay, well like don't fucking tell everyone how sustainable you're being and then fly to Costa Rica <laughs> to do a gig. <laughs> I don't know. Like, I'm just, I've never flown to Costa Rica. And I haven't told, I don't fucking write press releases telling everyone how great I am. Oh, I didn't fly to Costa Rica this year. Or I did fly to Costa Rica, but then I made sure to recycle while I was there. Yeah. <laughs> okay. <laughs> Basically, uh, oh, oh, actually, no, you, you haven't mentioned one part of this, Jake. Uh, <laughs> and that, that is that, uh, and that is that a tree will be planted for every ticket sold. So, you know, in that case... Great. Solved. Just plant the trees, man. You're solved. rich enough. 
<laughs> anyway, um, I can't wait to see you at Wembley Stadium then, Jake. Maybe we'll go there. Will a tree be Chris cut the, down the gang for every do? ticket they don't sell? <laughs> so it's basically, like, oh, we everyone. We didn't sell our Wembley. If we don't go. We've got fell <laughs> 10,000 trees. <laughs> So basically everyone has to go and get a ticket because otherwise we're going <laughs> to climate change is going to happen sooner. Uh so head head there. Uh they they're touring away. It's all going on. Uh and yeah. You know, got you know what I will say, I I applaud them because this is at least they're trying something. I think it's good. I just you know? think it's a weird one to like make a huge huge deal about because I feel like there are some holes <laughs> mm. in it. I think it's a good thing to do. It's probably just, yeah, yeah. And then if you get asked yeah. about it, to be like, oh, well, here's what we're doing. But to proactively be like, hey, guys, look at me. Look at what I'm doing. Yeah. Don't draw attention to it, guys. You've got the bangers. Um, you've got the bangers. Uh, Coldplay's <laughs> album is actually out now, um, which, yeah, is, sucks, which is cool. <laughs> well, <laughs> uh, well, apparently, but that's not going to help the trees. Jake, so come on, that's true. put it together. That's true. That's true. Music of the Spheres is out now, so let's uh, let's have a listen to one such track in honor of Coldplay planting trees and giving people discounts for getting on the number forty-three from Highgate. Um, this is Higher Power by Coldplay. I realize I went really oh, radio voice awful. there. Yeah, I, I, really, I went think, really like, radio. If we were in a studio, it'd be better because we could do that podcast thing where, like, someone reads something out and then they sort of turn on one elbow and go, "What, what do you think of that?" So we'd be like, uh, "Yeah, yeah, we don't." Coldplay's <laughs> new tour <laughs> to is going to be a hundred percent renewable energy in a move that many have called a welcome change. What do you think about that one, Jamie? How do you feel there? <laughs> like, Coldplay with higher power. <laughs> on the show. Why do they all do uh, that? As voice? you can see, Does we're really help? we're really doing well. Help me, please. Falling apart. <laughs> uh, call us in. <laughs> show is in a shambles Hello. again. Uh, Demi Lovato <laughs> says uh, says we need to stop calling yes. aliens aliens. What? Right. Um, is there a reason? Is there a reason for that, Jake? Uh, yeah, um, I think I think it's just. Yeah, what's the reason? You know, uh, ba- bad. Uh, I would tell you, but it won't load. So uh, here we go. Aliens is derogatory, <laughs> apparently. Yes. Um, Alien is a derogatory okay. term for anything. Uh, I think this is because okay, yeah. in America, they often call immigrants mm. uh, illegal aliens, right? Yes, they do. Which, which I we don't found really, very odd. We, yeah, which we don't really really do over here. So maybe that's the thing. But she says, no. uh, sorry, they say that they call them uh, ETs. Right. Yes, ETs. Um, I mean, true, true. Um, but aliens has become the common term, hasn't it? <laughs> yeah. So... Also, like, like I'm not really calling them it because I've never met an alien. Not yet. No. No. Like, um, if I met an alien, yeah, I'd be like, oh, hey, yeah. an alien. I'd be like, well, what's your name? I think the issue here is we don't know if aliens uh, are offended by that term or if they actually quite enjoy it. Because, like you say, there's not an alien spokesperson on this planet, well, unfortunately. I think, like, so we I think can't an alien, get to the bottom of the situation. An alien means that you're, like, in a, a country that's not of your origin, right? If you are mm. alien, you are from somewhere else. So an alien yes. is an alien, unless it's on its own planet. So if we met the aliens on their planet, then we wouldn't be able to call them aliens. Because mm. we'd be that, the aliens. That's a true point. That's, yeah. Yeah. Yeah, you're right. It's, yeah, they can't, what they you can't just them? be aliens all the time. Uh, I call them green people. Oh, um, yeah. Which I, is... Yeah, I, I kind of just go green people or little fellas. Um, 
little uh, little little guys. Uh, I presume they're all small. That's the problem I have. Yeah, um, I just call them pricks. Also, right? Do do you? Yeah, <laughs> Is, I bet that goes well in conversations somewhere. Well, I yeah, yeah, I don't um, want to be derogatory. These pricks. I don't these want to be pricks, derogatory eh? and, and use aliens. <laughs> so. Uh... I call them bricks. <laughs> I love the idea that you were trying to have a conversation about aliens somewhere and you're like, oh yeah, and you know, you know, who knows if pricks exist or not? Yeah, uh, we'll never who know. Knows, I was like, man. sorry, what's he talking about? What's he talking about? And you're like, oh, sorry, you mean aliens. Um, I used to know a guy who used to call E.T., uh, the E.T., famously, uh, Wrinkles. That was his wrinkles. nickname that he gave. Wrinkles e. Star. Wrinkles. Yeah, Wrinkles, you know. Knocking about, doing this thing. Um, but good on uh, This is actually because Demi Lovato has a documentary, by the way, um, called Unidentified. Um, Demi Lovato has gone off and done this, um, yeah, this show about aliens. Fair play. They fucking Crack love on. that stuff, don't they? It's always like, this mm. person loves UFOs. And then I remember, I think it was Danny Dyer did I Believe in UFOs. And basically, every single episode was him going like, what about crop circles? And then someone going, well, here's how you make a crop circle. And then him looking at the camera and going, I still believe in UFOs. And then the next one would be like, what about cattle mutilations? They'd be like, oh, well, here's how that happens. And then he's like, oh, yeah, but I still believe in UFOs. And then I think the last episode, he sort of looks in the sky with some Americans and some light happens. He's like, that's it. It's aliens. It's the, U it's the UFOs. <laughs> I'd recommend watching well, it. It was hopes, fucking brilliant. I hope so. Uh, yeah, tune in, get uh, get watching to all of those, uh, and yet yeah, be careful what you're saying about aliens because Demi Lovato will not be having it. Um, let's think about aliens. Feelings. You know, uh, that's the. Message. It makes me think of that classic David Bowie song uh, where he says that there's a star man waiting in the sky and he'd like to come and meet us, but we won't stop calling him aliens, and that's derogatory. <laughs> That's exactly, exactly what it says. Should we, we should probably play that song, shouldn't we, in that yeah. case? and then um, you can talk to uh, Amal and the Sniffers, yeah. which has already happened, but is also about to happen, and I'm not there for. Ooh. This is Starman. And we're back. We're back on Down With Boring. Um, that was our conversation about aliens and why they should be treated fairly. Um, always respect the aliens. If you're listening, thanks for listening. Do subscribe. Um, but while before that, we're now joined to bring up the standards um, by the wonderful uh, Amy and Deck from Ammo and the Sniffers. Uh, guys, how are we doing? Welcome in. How is life? Uh, welcome. Hello, hi, Hello. yes, yes. <laughs> Life is very good, thank you very much. Nice, nice. So you, uh, where, whereabouts are you in the world? Paint a picture of the exact scenario we find yourselves in. Um. um. <laughs> <laughs> this, uh, I mean, this makes me, it makes it alarm bells. That makes me sound like yeah. you're somewhere you shouldn't be, which is yeah. uh, always good. Um. Yeah, I'm. 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 Uh, I've. I've visited my our bass player. I'm, I've just had dinner with our bass player in my housemate at his girlfriend's Ooh. house. What yeah. did you have, Dick? Um, Taylor cooked um this chorizo pineapple tacos sort of thing. Ah, yeah. It was wow. really, really yum. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Ooh. But I was just. I was just like, when you ask where are you, I'm. I'm currently in our bass player's girlfriend's room for silence. And I was like, God, this is going to sound horrible, but. <laughs> <laughs> like, how do I say this? How do I yeah, say yeah. this in the right like, way? Yeah. So I was like, so I thought I'd tell the story first before I said where I was. Yeah. Yeah. Suddenly, like, oh no, this is gonna the band yeah. the band uh, meeting after this is not gonna go well uh, if, you, if there's some unaware situations going on. Uh, but, but, but sensational. A uh, pineapple, strong move. Um, I'm not sure. Are you a fan of pineapple on anything, or I'm mainly looking at the pizza here situation yeah i i like it on pizza i mean you know when you're a kid hawaiian's a good choice when you're a kid you know what i mean um mm. 
Oh, it's so delicious. I love pineapple on pizza. I like the sweet <laughs> cold feeling. I like the sweet hot feeling. I got a sweet tooth, basically. <laughs> so add sweetness on anything. That's kind of the main the main gist here. That's the main pattern of what we want to do here. I think so. I think that's a good idea. It's a good idea for all. It's a good idea for all. Uh, yeah, and that's all. We, oh, that's all we need to talk about, to be fair. So anyway, nice to see you all. Uh, no, <laughs> no. Um, it's obviously it's great to have you on. Obviously, uh, we're just a, I guess a few a few weeks removed or, or a month now from uh, Comfort to Me, the latest album. How has it been getting that out there um, for you guys? And kind of I don't know. I guess this kind of next chapter for you as a band. How's that been? Yeah, I mean, it's been good. Um, like, it's, I don't know, like, it's funny when you release something and you can't really perform it to anyone. Like, yeah, you, you see, like, lots of messages on your phone and lots of reviews. You get to see all that that you don't usually see when the world is normal. But without, um, without like, shows or anything, when people are telling you that, like, your, your album is doing well or it's been, like, received well, it's just really weird because... <laughs> There's no sort of visual thing of that except for like numbers on your phone or you know new yeah, followers just, and stuff like that. You just like nod that. and you're like, thanks. Yeah, and exactly. And that's it. And that's it. Yeah, <laughs> that's yeah. kind of the whole scenario. No, I can imagine it must be quite a, I guess, an odd, an odd situation to find something for a band to, you know, the live aspect is obviously feels like quite important to you guys. Like that must feel kind of odd at the moment. Yeah, totally. I think like um, we. We really pride ourselves on our live show. I think that's something that's always been like one of the um, priorities of the band is to, mm. um, yeah, just to put on a really good live show and something that we wanted a reputation for. So it's sort of what we were able to build the foundation of um, the band from of a few years of of touring and stuff and putting on good live mm. shows. So when that get, sort of gets taken out from underneath you, like a, a you know, a, a live show rug, I guess you could say. Yeah. Um, yeah. It's just weird when it sort of gets flipped back onto like the records that we write, I think. <laughs> a live show rug is so good. <laughs> the live show rug. Uh, yes. the, 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 live, the live show rug, it, 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 it's gone. It's like missing. That, I guess that it's is like the, that saying, um, cut the rug. But <laughs> no, it's like no, it's like the rug's been pulled out from underneath our feet, and the rug in this situation is the live show. I think it makes sense. That's the so live good. music, the live music aspect of this rug has gone, and you are left with just cold floor, if you will. Yeah, exactly. That's, that's it. The cold floor, the comforting cold floor, which I guess is just people's comments online, which is always good. I find it's always a good place to be in when that's the kind of barometer of life. If the metaphor is flaws, I feel like comments on online or whatever would be like really old tiles with like big gaps in between and it's like night time <laughs> and it's raining and it's like you might step on a snail. <laughs> you, you might cause damage. You don't know. You're just going to have to keep going. Or it's one where yeah. you'll, just, you'll just fall through. There's just a giant hole. You're like, that looks fine to stand on. And then it all goes to all goes to shit, and it all falls apart. That's basically <laughs> yeah. it. That's the real one. That's the exactly. real one. Bang on. <laughs> Amazing. Uh, and I guess, like, I guess for you guys, I guess putting this album out, it kind of feels like I don't know, kind of a big, uh, I don't know, not a big, but like an evolution for kind of like you guys from obviously you know the previous album. Was that something that was particularly conscious, I guess, in your mind when it came to obviously making this, or was it just like circumstance meant it happened like that? Um, I think it just kind of naturally happened a little bit. Like we were touring so much and, yeah, I feel like the fellas' musicianship really just levelled up and, like, you know, we just played everywhere all the time and that's what we put our time into. So I think mm. naturally it just kind of evolved. And as well, like we've all grown up a little bit and see things a bit differently and, um, yeah, I think that's kind of taken it to a different different level for sure. Mm. Mm. You, you, is that you've grown up? You know, you know, age, age is always the one. Age is, age is the killer. It's stuff that you, stuff that you do now that you wouldn't do back then. Yeah, I think so. Maybe stuff that I wouldn't do that I wouldn't do back then. <laughs> <laughs> Here we go. This is the stuff that's going on, stuff that's happening. It all piles in. It all piles in. Uh, and it must be, I guess, also you must feel like, I guess, I don't know, tighter as a band. Is that kind of it as well? Like, do you just feel like you like playing together? And again, like, I guess recording during, like, was this recorded, like, obviously during, 
everything going on as well? Did that kind of like change it a little bit as well? I think, yeah, like tighter in lots of different ways. Like we were tighter compared to when we first recorded the album because of the touring, but we all lived together when we started writing this album and recorded it. So, Mm. I mean, like we fully just became like one disgusting monster <laughs> disgusting monster <laughs> yeah yeah put someone put that put that on a t-shirt sell it yeah. now we need Analy- to get that out Analy- there Sniff is the one disgusting monster <laughs> um, yeah and um yeah like so like we we when we were going to write the album we were you know leaving home together to the to write and then coming home together and then mm. when we were recording it's the same sort of thing so like we were just like it's seriously like we could have only ever been tighter if we all shared one room. <laughs> that, would have, that would have been hell. I would love on tour if we all just shared one room all the time. You I, like, I like that there's the two the two opinions here. So I'm just gonna <laughs> let this let this continue. All in one room, you know, you're gathered together. Like, was, maybe uh, yeah. bonding. Uh, well, I was just discussing with Gus. I was like, look, I don't wanna I don't wanna quarantine with um the rest of the band, you know, when we come back to Australia. And I thought everyone would be like, yeah, I don't want to quarantine with you guys. And then it turns out I'm the odd one out. Every, and, and, Gus, and, and it's like, it's like, what do you mean you don't want to quarantine with the rest of the band? I was yeah. like, I, I was like, well, come, like, come on, you know. Why do you not want to? What are you going to do by yourself? I, 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 I don't know. I'll hang out with myself. I love myself. I mean, I, I mean. I don't want to make any comments on anyone's flaws or anything, but you know, I'm com- <laughs> I'm, I'm comfortable alone. <laughs> That's the self love. That's the self love you want yeah, to get out there. Exactly. You know, I've spent way too much time alone over the last year. I've done enough thinking. Yeah, <laughs> I've done that. I've covered the bases. Now you're just like, look, if we need to get into a very very small room and just stand there. I just want to sleep in a, like in a room with nine bunk beds and like heaps of people. <laughs> <laughs> Almost like a like a summer camp sort of vibe. That's kind of where the next step is for you guys as a band. Yeah. Uh, yeah. To, to work to work for it all. Uh, you mentioned you mentioned about living together. Um, I, I I'm interested to see who kind of took on what role when living together. <laughs> like who was the chef? Who was the one who kind of kept control of the house? Uh, and and who was who was the uh, who was the runaway? Who was the causing the chaos, if you will? I feel like we all, um, I don't know, we're pretty functional as a family. Like we've toured all over together and like lived together on the road and like lived together mm. at various different times and stuff. So it's like uh, everyone just kind of just really pretty is pretty functional. And in terms, <laughs> of the, in terms of the chef, yeah, Gus makes pretty good like hot chip nachos. So it's like hot chips. And, um, and like nacho topping and cheese and that. Um, Declan made this a couple is... of things as well. What, you, Declan and Bryce can cook spaghetti bowl pretty good. Yeah, I, I made a few spaghetti bowls. I remember one night for morale <laughs> early on, <laughs> I, uh, I sort of orchestrated a, a Mexican night. Mm. Um, Big. Just to make it, you know, like, you know, you, you're in Melbourne and it's starting to get colder. So I was like, yeah, we'll have a, a Mexican <laughs> night. So Bryce learned to make margaritas. He's never working, worked in a bar in his life. <laughs> <laughs> I, I made I made nachos and we bought Coronas and 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 stuff like that. I think or maybe yeah tacos. But yeah, like I, I like to make spaghetti bolognese. I make a lot of different oh. pastas and um, Ooh, I'll yeah, say. I think no. like Amy. Amy was the worst one to be around hungover. I need to call Amy out on that. <laughs> <laughs> I'm the worst hungover person ever. Yeah. <laughs> Yeah. Do you just kind of like fall into like a ball in the corner and just, or, or, or are you just like, I don't need to see anyone today? There's, there's two different versions. We've all been there. I throw up heaps and heaps, and like my <laughs> hair, my hair gets like really fluffy. I look like a, like a, you know, a seagull that you see at like a train station. It's like missing a leg. And it's... <laughs> 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 That's the image. That's you after a big one. It just kind of, you're there. You are moving. And I but... kind of just like squawk at people and want them to put chips in my mouth. <laughs> the squawk. The squawk. squawk. That, no, I gotta, yeah, I gotta say the squawk. That is exactly it. You literally, you squawk at people. <laughs> <laughs> just from afar, just going at it. Yeah. Just, uh, and they're just like, look, just feed me bits yeah. as we go. Yeah. It's like, like I, don't a, need... I feel like specifically, and it's happened multiple times, but it's like a 1 pm, like the door will open. 
I'll be like hunched over in an L shape, <laughs> and just and then I'm just gonna be like ah. <laughs> just let out cry and everyone's like yeah right amy's up amy's up yeah. we need to we need to we need to comfort if you will we need to look yeah. after in this situation uh amazing well well the cookbook sounds like it's coming uh and also we now know what to do after a night out um just help us be prepared be, be ready to go um i did see that you recorded almost like a i guess a concert film of sorts you're obviously talking about you're not being able to play together but it was like like by by the docks obviously for the album like was that kind of like the first First time you could play together, I guess, in a lot of ways, like obviously without a crowd, but obviously being able to kind of like play the album, um, if you will, must have been a nice, a nice release, even if it's yeah. not the full. That the full was the thing. first time we got to play it in full, like in the album order, um, mm. which was pretty dope. And like we mm. haven't, you know, truth be told, we're in lockdown here. We've been in lockdown for about two or three months now. Yeah. Um, so we haven't, like, you know, we've been in lockdown pretty much the whole two years, so we don't get to practice that much and play together and see each other, but that was real special and, like, nice. Mm. Yeah, yeah, to kind of, like, see, get that moment where you're kind of, like, together again and I guess almost reminds you, like, oh, yes, we are we are a band. We have yeah. to have an album. We are, yeah. we are functioning in that way. Because you kind of lose your, like, identity like that because if you don't, I mean, if you're not doing the thing you're doing, are you really that? Are you really doing it? <laughs> <laughs> if you just sat there, just like, what am I doing? Say, well, I'm gonna have some food. Yeah. Gonna, yeah. Uh, like if I, some if I was a librarian and I hadn't been to the library in two years, could I really say I was a librarian? <laughs> Was it it's taken away after a few years? And yeah. I mean, you, haven't, you haven't clocked in just yet, like for it's quite funny, a while yeah. now. People ask you, like, well, what do you do for a job? I'm, like, I'm a musician, but you know, obviously, I'm not working at the moment, so I've sort of just resorted to playing acoustic guitar at 6 a.m. after a big night. You know, <laughs> and, you're, like, yeah. you're like, look, music, music, here, I'm doing it, I'm doing yeah, it. Yeah. <laughs> or, uh, yeah, I just pick the songs that go on the Bluetooth speaker. That's me as a musician. <laughs> They turn around, they're like, you've got this, you've got this. Uh, mm. but, but I guess there must be, I guess, you know, obviously, yeah, that anticipation to come back and uh, obviously play live. Do you think, um, like, do, do you already have in mind kind of like how you might, I guess, build that live show when you kind of like return? Obviously, with a new album, slightly different in that regard. Like, have you got an idea of kind of what you want to do? Or is it very much you're like, look, we've got two years to catch up on here. We're just going to go for it. I don't think we think about stuff like that too much. Like we're pretty spontaneous and, you know, mm. a lot of like that's kind of like I guess the punk thing is like it's all about spirit. Like when we first started it wasn't about how well we could play but just that we wanted to play and that was enough. Yes. And and same with going into it like this. It's like, well, we'll just do it and see what happens and fine tune it as we go along and figure out the problems and iron them out if we can and if not, we'll, we'll just represent them. <laughs> Yeah, 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 yeah. We'll just own them. We'll, we'll just, just own them. them at that point. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Just like, like, guess what? If you want the big, ridiculous twenty-minute guitar solo, Guns N' <laughs> Roses are still playing. Like, you oh, can yeah. go buy the ticket. You can, you but can go with it. Thirty-minute guitar solo. I'm yeah. <laughs> that's the thing. No, that's. No, it's like if I mean, if you give me thirty minutes, I'll do it. So I mean. That's just, <laughs> It's, it's a threat. I will do it. <laughs> That's a challenge right here, right now. Yeah, yeah, the yeah. next London show that you're back, I want a 30-minute guitar solo yeah. on stage. If you want to wear the hat, go for it. Yeah. Um, I'll, I'll, I'll pull out the works. I'll pull out the, the, the fucking um, the violin. I'll be playing my guitar with a violin. I'll do it all. Yeah, I'll invent new tricks for guitar soloing. If you give me 30 minutes for a guitar solo, I'll do it. <laughs> <laughs> it's been laid out now. It's like it's recorded on air. It lives on forever. We have this in writing. Um, <laughs> we, we wait. We wait for that. Uh, what we'll do now is we will we will play one such track. This is does not have the thirty minute guitar solo. That is obviously still to come. That's a live treat. So obviously buy your tickets when they're back around. Uh, this is uh, this is guided by angels by Ammo and the Snippers. <laughs> What a tune. What a tune. Huge song. Huge song. 
big fan. Yeah. Big fan. It is. It is. It is. Could have um, could have used a solo, but whatever. <laughs> yeah, the, here we, we're into we're into the debate now. We're into the you know you've already you've already said Deck that you wanted to you know go away from the rest of the band and not uh, quarantine with each other. So we're <laughs> we're now into the debate of like where's my guitar solo go? This yeah. is it's all it's all coming out. It's all coming out. Um, this is the part of the show now where um, some people say it's the best part of the show. Some people say it's the worst, uh, and some people say, oh no, not that. So you might fall somewhere in between. Um, but each week we play a game with our special guests uh, related to the band in some way. Uh, and this week we thought, um, you know, you've travelled you've traveled the world. You've played all over the place. Um, we want to get to know Amal and Sniffers a bit more. So what we're going to do is we're going to lay out a range of different situations um, that you think you might thrive in or you may want to avoid. We just want to work out what sort of, what, 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 what are you up for? Uh, which we've called comfort according to Amal and the Sniffers. <laughs> yes, <laughs> ladies and gentlemen, <laughs> cutting edge once again. Um, Any Journalism Award, we are here. Um, <laughs> we are here, unfortunately. Um, let's let's start with let's start with an easy one. How do you guys feel about weddings? Do you enjoy weddings? Are you a particular wedding uh, wedding band and wedding people? I've never been to a wedding. I don't think I don't know oh, if I'd like them. Amy, I, I don't think I like them. I like um, I like the wedding singer. <laughs> yes, yes, great one. Uh, yeah, I think that's a good, pretty funny movie. Uh, but I don't think I like weddings. But I would like to go to say like, yeah, I'll go to Bryce or Declan's wedding. I guess I'm going to hey, get I'm, not getting, I'm not getting married. <laughs> Uh, what well, do you have something to announce on the show? No, no, no. Yeah, so, no, I'm still heavily single, but um, last, last wedding I went to was my dad's, and oh, yeah, and my yeah, Amy was there. My dad pissed himself at his wedding, he was that strong, drunk. yeah, strong. And, and then he did a shot of red wine out of a candle. <laughs> Sorry, yeah, yeah, he pissed himself at his own wedding. <laughs> Um, so, so shot of red wine out of a candle. Yeah, uh, um, um, amazing. Um, I have many questions. Yeah, um, he he, he wow. kissed himself with a big smile on his face too. He knew what he was doing. Okay. <laughs> He's like, you know what? It's yeah. my wedding. Yeah, I'm gonna do. What I want. And, I, and I kind of rate. I kind of rate the the power play of that. You know, this yeah. is my show. Who yeah, are you yeah, gonna get mad? Like, Who's gonna yeah, it would be pretty liberating. <laughs> so that's what should be done now at weddings, everyone. Just yeah. if you really want to enjoy yourself, just just go, just go when you need to. Don't worry oh, about anyone else. Put to put it out there, had it, you know, it was pissed. <laughs> <laughs> oh my god! <laughs> this this show has taken a turn. Uh, <laughs> No one checked. No one checked. So, so a wedding vibes. Actually, yeah. like I mean, I mean, you know, going down well. Maybe some hesitance, but yeah. also, if you're going to do a wedding, it's going to be a big one with memorable moments. I guess that's what do you that's think of weddings? Key. Weddings. Yeah, you know, I I enjoy I enjoy a wedding. It's a uh, you know it's it's a good it's just a reason to get really really pissed. I find mm. it's a really great reason. And you go, do you know what? You know, it's a wedding. You've got to. I um, think it's like duly nice and kind of fucked up that like two people in love make everybody else celebrate their love. It's like, who, <laughs> like how selfish, it. how <laughs> selfish of you. Like you're happy, just you go do you. Yeah, I, 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 it's a it's a good way of looking at weddings. Actually, quite a flip to the wedding uh, scenario. Uh, but also, you know, if you get some free some free drinks, some free food. That's true. I, I, I'm. I'm I, I'm anyone's after a free drink, free food. To be honest, that's all I need. <laughs> that's all I need, and I'm there. To be honest, uh, but let's let's move on to um, how do you feel about um, karaoke uh, as a concept? Do you enjoy karaoke, or or are you like, no, don't need that. Don't need someone going up and singing Bohemian Rhapsody. I like <laughs> it. I do karaoke for a living. <laughs> Amazing. <laughs> <laughs> just with a live, just with a live band instead of a machine, yeah, exactly. if you will. Yeah. 
<laughs> Big fans. Uh, do you do you have you do you partake in karaoke when it is knocking about when it is available or is it always a bit? It, it's always a lot. It's always a lot. I think it's the funnest thing in the world. I love it heaps, but I like have heaps of problems with my voice. So, like, if I'm touring and stuff, I usually lose my voice all the time and like can't really <laughs> sing it. But I like, I'd love everyone else around me to do it. Mm. <laughs> yes, I love that. You're like, why can't you play the show today because you have no voice? Well, <laughs> when's karaoke after the show? I sung for an extended period of time, <laughs> yeah. and now I can't speak at all in any single way. <laughs> um, so, more practically. Maybe just avoid now and again. But if not, everyone else, dive in. Dive in. Mm. I think that's a good shout. I really love karaoke. It's one of my favorite things to do, and I didn't think that it would be something that I enjoyed because I used to be quite shy when I went out. But um, mm. I bought I bought our bass player, Gus, a karaoke microphone for his birthday last year, which was like a little <laughs> portable, rechargeable thing with like a speaker in it, and he didn't put that thing down until it, ran out of battery on his birthday it was like it was insane <laughs> he just did not stop and like he would just talk into the karaoke microphone he didn't even tell like he didn't even sing he was just talking to people if someone asked him a question he would just talk back into the microphone he loved that microphone it was actually just, I, i'm gonna go out and say it was the best present he got for his, <laughs> for his birthday it was the microphone he could just speak into yeah, uh, I'm a big fan, big fan, big fan of that. Um, anyone looking for any presents this year? Obviously, Christmas isn't too far away, so you know, think about it. Think about it. Um, moving on, another one. Um, how, do you think you'd be comfortable or happy with running a restaurant? We've already talked about food. Um, what if there was an Amel and the Sniffers restaurant? Do you think it would go well, or do you think it would fall apart very, very quickly? I think. It would be like a more like a chicken shop, but there'd be some really nice sandwiches, some nice like nice. like burgers, chicken bits, um, some quick some quick stuff like you know almost almost fast food, but just like here's some good stuff, eat, yeah, enjoy. yeah, something like that. I think it would probably fall apart pretty quick, but I think we'd all give it a go. <laughs> You'd have a fun time. That's yeah. the most important thing. You'd enjoy enjoy the occasion doing it. That's the most well, important thing. Well, you know, thing. we're a bit of an entrepreneurial crew. <laughs> <laughs> there's various it. offshoots. There's various it's, offshoots coming. Uh, you, t- you tipped uh, you tiptoed around that so much that you tiptoed the word out of your out of your mouth. <laughs> yeah, 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 entrepreneurial. Is that, is that, it? that is that is yeah, yeah, yeah. that's it. Uh, the business, the business side of things, you know, mm-hmm. bands are releasing things all the time. You know, there's hot sauces, there's beers, like very easy. You know, we can we can sort out some merch. You know, moving around it all. We, you know, it's a plan. It's a plan. Business plans are made on on moments like this. Um, it would be, be incredible stuff. I've got um got some more for you. Um, how do you feel about potentially judging a dog show? Would that be a, would that would that bring comfort to you, or would you feel a bit a bit a bit awkward about it all? I'm not interested. <laughs> no, just, just, just just not at all. Just not at all. The, dogs, the dogs, the judging, none of it. <laughs> well, I feel like I couldn't take that spot from somebody who'd actually like it. I don't like it. I think I feel the same about dogs as I do as people. Like. I'm not just going to like them just because they're walking past me. I'm not just going to say, hi, <laughs> and like that. I mean, I, I want to get to know it. I want to like, <laughs> I'm a bit that, cold. That is such a good way of looking at it, to be fair. <laughs> like, you wouldn't you wouldn't do that to like a person. You would be like, oh, who's this guy? Just a bloke there, just like, um, yeah. oh, hi. <laughs> Yeah. <laughs> How old is he? Yeah. Like, you, know, you, wouldn't, yeah. you wouldn't be doing that. You wouldn't yeah, be doing yeah. that. It's such a good way of looking at it. Actually. I, I do wish, like, after a night, like, say I went to a house party and I was mm. meeting everyone for the first time, that I had, like, a best-in show for someone that I could give to them at the end of the night. <laughs> And then like a and then a runner up, you know. Say you have like a really good conversation with someone in the kitchen, or you really connect with someone about music at the table. You give them like a best in show at the end of the night, you know. 
Yeah, but I feel like you probably have your own version of that. <laughs> <laughs> what the fuck? <laughs> <dark? laughs> Roaming around with just, just at the end of the night, just kind of like... Well done. Uh, you did really yeah. well tonight. Congratulations. Yeah. Um, you're, you're number you're number three, unfortunately. Yeah. Uh, you did well. You're, yeah. you're in the top three. You know you you uh, uh, Yeah. You, extra points for your for the for your coat. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> As you leave. Well done. Thank you very much. Uh, so maybe not judging dog shows, but house parties coming soon. It's a new uh, it's a new avenue. Um, I've got um, I've got one more for you. Um, how do you feel about um, competitive eating tournaments? Um, I'm into it. I give it a go. In, into it. Is there a particular yeah, food? It. Is there a particular food that you feel like you would particularly thrive on? Well, I'm a munter. Like with my stomach, I, I just munt if I eat too much or drink too much. But I give it. I just eat anything. I'd go burgers, <laughs> hot dogs. I'd, I'd try it all. I'd go chilly and feel crazy, but I'd do it. <laughs> I'd cover it. You'd cover it. You'd give it a go, which is that's yeah. it. And you get caught up in it all. Those competitive yeah. eating tournaments, they kick off. Yeah. Um, you see it with the hot dogs. It's way I too much. I tell you what, though, when I was, um, we had a band meeting just before, and there were some snacks, and it felt like a bit of a com- competition trying to get, <laughs> get the worst snacks in. <laughs> Put in the middle of the table, and you were like, uh, right, I'm going to take all of these. Yeah, now. yeah I inhaled those leaders. licorice chuff bullets. The, bullets. the licorice bullets are so good. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. licorice bullets i mean oof, that's a that's a strong thing just to just to tuck into to dive through i fully rate that i fully i fully rate it so so it's a yes from amy deck how do you yeah. feel are you, i think are you, like, do you go for it no like f- f- food eating that that's no that gives me anxiety i've seen like that documentary on like the the japanese guy and the american guy like how they had that big like feud and all that stuff, the big battle. No. It, it, it's, it freaks me out. But I think like something like I reckon if I was going to be competitive, it would be milk. I reckon I, I'm a big oh, milk drinker. You should drink milk. <laughs> yeah. I reckon I will drink like a liter of milk with it, like two bowls of spaghetti. I can, yeah, I can drink. I can drink two liters of milk with one meal. I reckon like if I had to make it competitive, yeah, yeah, yeah. I, I can drink. If someone was like, if someone was like Declan, I want you to drink two mil- two liters of milk a day for this whole month. I would not even. It wouldn't be a challenge. Like I can do that. <laughs> like when I when I go to my mum's house, she she just uses milk for um coffees, you know, or teas. So I just I I absolutely demolish her milk, and then I have this <laughs> the most depressing walk ever down to the shops to top up her milk for her because I finished the milk off. <laughs> Back to the same guy who's there, just like, yeah. you've been in here three times today already. Right? Yeah. Maybe you should stop drinking the milk. I didn't even know that was scientifically possible. I thought there was a point after so much milk that your stomach just goes, nope, and it just comes straight back up. But clearly, no, well, yeah, you're just, defying science here. Yeah, I, I didn't realise until I was maybe early 20s that drinking lots of milk made people like upset and not feel good. <laughs> I, <laughs> you were just like, this is normal, apparently. Yeah, so if there's someone out there who wants to challenge me to a milk drinking contest, let's bring it, bring it on. Send it in. Uh, we'll send it in. We'll organise it. We'll make it yes, happen. Um, what, what, what a moment that would be. Um, just I, here's I, some I, milk. I, go for it. Yeah, I drink. If, I, if I'm hungover, I'll go for the milk before water. Mm, I think that's fair. I think that's yeah, okay. Cool. I, cool. Think, I, think, I think I think I think that's you know I think that's very fair. It's cool. all hearty, I guess. Calcium, calcium mm. for the bones. That's the way to do it. That's the way to do it. Um, I have I have I have got one more. Got one more for you. Um, how do you feel um, if if you were stranded on a desert island? Do you think? you'd be able to survive. Would that be a comfortable situation for you guys? We've already talked about living together in the same room. So how about an island where you're the only ones on it? Do you think I that think, would go well? Yeah, I think it would do pretty good. Yeah. I feel pretty confident in that. I would like that almost. <laughs> I would oh, no, like Can that be arranged? <laughs> like sometimes I just daydream about, yeah, the world like really collapsing and like me having to get like a backpack with like a knife and like heaps of like barocas and like rope and, and like just have to run like up the east coast of australia and like light fires and figure it out <laughs> no so, so, so you're actually prepared like uh, you've got no, this in mind i just I, like i just think about it but i don't think anything useful i just think i'll take like you know like a box of ritalin 
and I'll take a box of Barocca. So it's like, I can just like, <laughs> get heaps of energy, but that also gets me vitamins. <laughs> That's it. You're like, I'm covered. It's like, you got anything else? Uh, no, not really. But... <laughs> I, I, you know, I have, I have the energy. I, I'll be moving about a bit. That's, yeah, that's so classic. Like, I, I know that music's not a competition, um, but we have been on the topic of competitiveness. I think, like, if we had, like, a, a musician survivor or something where each band was on Ooh. was on an island, I really back us. With Amy on our team, I really, I really, really back us. Yeah. <laughs> I love that. <laughs> Music, a survivor music edition. Uh, we'll yeah. gather some bands, we'll put you on an island, see what happens. I, 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 think I can I can make see. it work in everyone's best interest. Yeah. Yeah, yeah, yeah. I'm ready to make this work. You know, if you have to fight for land, you're ready to do it. Um, we'll, make, we'll try and make this happen. We'll have, we'll have some calls uh, and we'll see what you do next time you're over in the UK. Just leave a few days, <laughs> leave a few days spare in the tour. <laughs> uh, and we'll try and make we'll try and make it happen. We'll get some people in. You um, make it a couple of weeks. Get in. Yeah. I'll get in like Fontaine's DC, Viagra Boys, Idols. We'll get in like Dream Wife, Sleep and Mods, and we'll just fucking have a go. We'll <laughs> Everyone, you heard it. All of you bands, you heard it. You've been challenged. We will see you on uh, I don't know the Isle of Wight. Maybe that's a little yeah. bit man. That's that's that. That'll be an interesting one. I'll be honest. If you're all stranded on the Isle of Wight, that's a little <laughs> world there. Um, but we can't wait. We'll see. We'll see what happens. That is the plan. And with that, with that plan, I think our time, our time has come up. Our time has come to come to an end. I feel like we've learned a lot uh, and set some challenges for the next few uh, the next few few years. So I'm looking forward to it. I'm looking forward to it. Uh, I'm going to go probably try and drink some milk now. Um, yeah. That's what I've learned. Um, and then I'll probably end up maybe like you, Amy, after drinking all the milk um, in a corner, maybe squawking. Um, yeah, I'm that's intolerant, so you won't be that would go, yeah, that, that would go, yeah, that, that would go, yeah, that would, 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 that And there we go. Ammo and the Sniffers. Hurts. Um, Amy and Deck. Uh, a classic one, Jake. You enjoyed listening listening in on that. Listening into oh, the yes, sights and sounds. Of course, because I was definitely there. Uh, it was wonderful. <laughs> <laughs> um, how do you feel about um, Survivor with bands, as was pitched by Ammo and the Sniffers there? So, Desert Island... Uh, Ammo and the Sniffers, uh, Viagra Boys, Fontaine's DC, Dream Wife, Idols, Sleaford Mods. Uh, I'm sure I've probably forgotten another band in there, but how would you feel? Where do they what, even would find you these islands? Uh, it's always interesting to me when they're like, oh, it's we've discovered another island. island. It's Where? always an island that they can survive on, but one that no one lives on. And mm. I'm like, what? No one lives there. Because there's so many people in this world that are like weirdos. Like, surely they'd be like, hey, I'll live there. Fuck it. But they yeah. don't. Fuck it. Yeah. Wasn't there a job that was going that was like, you could be basically like head of island? Um, mm. Yeah, but I, I think that was like one of the one shit time. cold islands instead of one of the Caribbean <sighs> ones. You know. <laughs> yeah, a little bit different, isn't it? Yeah, yeah. yeah. Like, oh, look, I'm, I've got my own, I've got my own island. Like, oh no, it's freezing cold Minus off the coast of Scotland, five and the wind is blowing my fingers off. A <laughs> little bit different. Uh, who would your money be on to win, um, like some sort of Survivor series on an island uh, out of those I bands? I think. I think. I mean, Hamill and the Sniffers just generally. I mean, they basically yeah. they all grew up. I know Gus grew up on Tasmania, which is even weirder. But like, they're used to dealing with weird animals and shit, right? Australia's <laughs> like. Mm. Like man, like everything in Australia wants to kill you, so they'd be on this island. They'd be like, "This is paradise," you know. <laughs> Nothing's trying True. to kill me. There's not a racist in charge. We're not burning so much coal that the entirety of one side of the country is on fire. Like that's true. Good stuff. Good stuff. Um, and wonderful, wonderful stuff from Amon the Sniffers. Uh, even if um, Deck does drink two two liters of milk, 
on a regular basis. Um, well, you can't get that on the island, I imagine, unless it's like pig milk. <laughs> Coconut milk, maybe, depending on the tropical location. No, that's gross, isn't it? That's gross. Tell you what isn't gross, new music. That's right. We're we're back with another selection of some of the best tracks we've heard this week. A little tip of the cap, if you will, on what you should be checking out on. Um, Jay, do you want to do you want to start us off? Uh, I would with love some, to some new uh, music. There is a very welcome return of uh, a dork favorite and a favorite of mine, uh, Sunflower Bean, Ooh, who nice. have just released their new track, uh, "Baby Don't Cry." Um, so they've been gone for a while. Can't remember yeah. how long. Quite a while, though. Yeah, uh, yeah, yeah, yeah. Been, been a couple probably, of years, probably, what, isn't it? A couple of two years. Two years? Yeah. Yeah, they had let's an EP go with two. two. years ago, didn't they? So, uh, yes, they did. But yes, very excited about this. Uh, obviously, New York-based uh, band who just make, I don't know, it's just really sort of fun, <clears throat> sunny indie music. And it's just always... Every song they've ever released has, has just been great. I've never heard yeah. a bad track from Sunflower. I mean, this new one is also great. So, I mean, I don't know if it sounds that different to the other stuff, but I honestly, I just want more of it because I love them so much. So I don't really care. <laughs> yeah. Yeah, no, really, really good. And um, yeah, that King of the Dudes EP was like really, really good. I remember that when that, when that came out. But also, I don't know, I guess I still feel like they're kind of underrated. Like they're such a good yeah, and consistent band. They sound huge. They sound like they yeah. would be absolutely massive. And they're, they're just, they just never, I don't know, they never had that cut through. So hopefully with this, they'll get it. Because I think they really do deserve it. Yeah, a welcome, a welcome, welcome return. Let's see what uh, see what comes in the future. But yeah, if this is anything to go by. Lovely stuff. They're playing Electric Ballroom as well next year in London. They are. That and is true. other shows around the country, of course. Yes, um, for all of our fans so, in Portsmouth, they will be playing the Wedgwood Rooms. Cambridge Massive. I hear Junction 2. Yes. Shout out to Newcastle you. Newcastle fans. Newcastle University. I assume that's a, a part of the university and not just a classroom. Yes. But uh Yeah. Mama Anyway. Ma- Mama do Mama do the hump, but in Birmingham it'll be Mama Ruse for Sunflower Beam. This is Baby Don't Cry by Sunflower yes. Beam. Wonderful stuff. Wonderful stuff from Sambalar Beam. See? Tours. They're all going on. They're all going they on. They are. They're back. And we are tired. <laughs> <laughs> but don't worry. I've got something to lift your spirits, Jake. Uh, another slice of new music. This one from a, a brand new artist called uh, Alex Page, um, who has got a really, really good brand new track called 25. Um, so, yeah, I don't know. Alex Page is kind of... Like, I don't know, just popped out of nowhere, kind of like for, for us. Like, this track kind of like well, for dropped, you maybe. dropped in our direction. All right, sorry. Please, please tell more about the story of Alex Page, uh, Jake. No, I still don't know fan. who it is. So they haven't yet Great. popped out of nowhere for me. <laughs> well, I'm popping They're about it up to. now. Yep. <laughs> they certainly are. Uh, yeah, this is just a really, really great track. I am um, just like the second that I heard it, I just just like, oh wow, this is like amazing. Um, she's from California, nineteen years old, just going for it. Uh, and this song, real, um, I don't know, I get, I, I get real Phoebe Bridges vibes at times on this track, but then it kind of just builds to a lot more of a crescendo i guess like mm. i don't know what it is like it, there's definitely obviously strong similarities there but i just think there's this kind of like fuzzy edge around kind of the side of what she does so it kind of means like i don't know it could go anywhere it's quite hard always when we get like an artist like remember obviously allison allison pontier um <laughs> Always come in here bringing up that name. Oh, I haven't heard that, that in a long time. time. <laughs> 
Sorry, um, <laughs> I'll try to control myself. <laughs> Couldn't stop you there, I knew. Um, but yeah, like it's it's hard to kind of like tell, you know, kind of like oh, I don't know what like bit more of the, what the artist is and wh- where they're going to go. But if this is anything to go by, yeah, huge fan. Um, it's a really really lovely track. I think yeah, if you're a fan of like Phoebe Bridges, if you're a fan of, um, I think even people like Bieber Doobie, I think there's bits of that in here. I think there's just some really 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 nice beginning and so uh yeah really excited i love this track uh, i think it's very very good so yeah let's let's stop me yabbering on this is 25 uh by alex page I was expecting a full-length cover of the Adele album there, so that oh. was a surprise. <laughs> was a surprise, but uh, pull it Sorry, back, mate. I think. Sorry, yeah, pull it, pull it back. You know, once your once that disappointment had been pushed to the side, mm. enjoyed the track. Yeah, big fan. Looking I forward. Did. What comes uh, next? Yes, Joe and the Shit Boys. Yes, the uh, bisexual vegan punks from the Faroe Islands. Uh, the best thing to happen to music uh, since probably, I mean, what Beethoven, maybe? Um, <laughs> right, that's the that's the distance, is it? Just, yeah, something like that. Yeah, right, uh, okay. they're back with a new track. Uh, Save the planet, you dumb shit. <laughs> uh, and and Joe of Joe and the Shit Boys has explained uh, that save the planet you dumb shit is about all the small things you can do to clean up our world so our grandchildren can live without worrying about the ozone layer like reusing a plastic bag at the grocery store before you stop at mcdonald's on your way home in your jeep <laughs> so a lot of similarities to our conversation earlier about uh coldplay's uh renewable energy touring. pretty much <laughs> yeah yeah, yeah. <laughs> uh no join the shit boys are great because they're just do not take themselves seriously at all really great politically bang on but like lyrically i mean in this it says kill your firstborn that's a way to help save the planet <laughs> cut down your carbon emissions uh so yeah i love them i wish them all the best uh i missed their london show and it haunts me forever um so i'm hoping by plugging this i'll bring them back over to the uk here's hoping here's hoping that's the call here is that's hoping call. um yeah their second album uh, will be released on seven inch pink vinyl. Uh, <laughs> big big album, long long yeah, album. Then. Seven long inch. Album I mean, then. actually, to be fair, I was going to say that's not very long, but I think the first one was a seven inch too. So uh, Joe has two seven inches with the shit boys. Um, make of that what you will. This is, uh, this is save the planet, you <laughs> dumb shit, by Joe and the shit boys. <laughs> Sort your trash. Save the planet. Two, two seven I inches. I can't wait to catch a glimpse of uh, Joe's pink seven inch. <laughs> Oh, let's move this on before we are shut swiftly down by Ofcom uh, and any sort of <laughs> hey, decency. It's all above board. It's, it's all about above the album. Board. Yeah, it, Egyptian Blue are back. Let's talk about <laughs> Egyptian Blue. Bit of blue, eh? Uh, yeah. Oh, tell oh, me about it. Know what I mean? Uh, with a brand new single, Salt. Um, which? How do you say salt? Salt. I say salt. 
It's in salt, salt and pepper. Is that what I'm salt saying? And, salt That's and pepper. That's what I'm saying, right? Yeah. Salt. Yeah, good. Okay. Instead of good to check. salt. Salt. Salt, how some people say it. What's the... Salt. Salt, salt. and pepper. Salt. Salt. Salt and pepper. Salt. Yeah, I think we're right. Good. Yeah. Just checking. Cool. We just want to clarify that before we continue. Weird word, isn't it? Yeah. Well, yeah. They've chosen to name a track after that, so, you mm. know, tackling the big subjects, I feel. Is the B-side uh, called Pepper, if not Missed Opportunity? <laughs> <laughs> we'll have to wait and see, because this is just a brand new track. It's the first taster of a debut album, which is going to arrive next year, um, which is great. We've got enough warning, which is which is wonderful. Mm-hmm. Um, Good, yep. Andy, singer of the band, says that it's uh, he'd been reading this book called On Solitude by Michael de Montaigne, uh, and we've been discussing it on a slow ferry to Dublin. When I wrote Salt, seeing the world as a feverish dream, the book resonated with my sense that we can cover up emotions and nervous energy with a veil of pretending to be okay. Uh, that is also the um, <laughs> description to Down With Boring every single week. Is, yeah. uh, <laughs> you know what must really suck? Well, right. If you like, so you, you're on a ferry to Dublin. You've been reading yeah. a book, like it's you know, it's a it's a, a good book, a well regarded book. Yes, you've written yeah. a track, and then they go, oh, so what's the track about? And then you say that, and you go, God, that that sounds really pretentious, but it wasn't. No, like, it was just no, a thing no, it's I was just a doing. Thing. Like yeah, this yeah, is yeah. just a thing I was doing, and now you've asked me, it just sounds like the worst <laughs> thing on the planet. But actually, <laughs> yeah, yeah. Fair enough. just you know, you just be like, oh, God, what am I meant to say here? I yeah, was doing like, that. That is what I was doing. <laughs> um, but yeah, this is like, I know the latest one, Egyptian Blue, uh, I guess just before the pandemic, really, or just at the start of the pandemic, they were kind of like playing a bunch of shows and putting stuff out there. Uh, and it was really, really great to see. And I don't know, there's like, there's a lot of hype. I've seen them a few times, really, really like them. They're kind of like a next evolution uh, of this kind of, you know, for lack of a better term, post-punk world. But there's definitely a lot more, I don't know, like angular stuff to it so i'm a big fan uh, angular, i really, really like eh? it angular Everyone and uses it's that out word, but they don't have a fucking know, clue angular. what they mean yeah <laughs> it's out through yada records too so and they know what they're doing so they do know. yeah i saw them before uh before everything shut down so good to see mm. them coming out the other side of that with a debut album uh because yeah. one of those bands that it was like could have packed it in you know uh, yeah, so really really glad yeah. they haven't uh, and this this new track is great yeah Big big fan, uh, one to keep an eye on, and one to just catch live, yeah, whenever you can. And um, they're they're touring uh, later this year, so, so that's when you can. That's when that's when you can. I actually think they're playing the Lexington. Um, well, days in the past when you listen to this. So, oh good. Sorry, sorry on about the pulse. that. Uh, but they're playing Nottingham, Blackpool, and Manchester for all of my <laughs> Blackpool fans out there for the show. Yep. Mm. Yep. yep. Take a look at the illuminations and then listen to Egyptian Blue. Why wouldn't you? Um, before then, um, let's listen to Salt, Egyptian Blue. Wonderful stuff, wonderful stuff, and that you know, a lovely dose of new music for you there, uh, Jake. To maybe this cold man, I feel like shit. Right, what next? <laughs> Tell you what's going to lift that cold. No, I hope you know, something what will. You usually need it's really weighing me down. A, it's a rem it's a job. Mug, you know, well, it's <laughs> it's a rem job, and it can only come <laughs> from one person. It's Remy Wolf. <laughs> Dork cover art, dork, dork cover star, uh, and album debut album out in the world. Um, dork cover star and album. <laughs> we'll pull it apart. Uh, Juno, Juno is the album uh, by Remy Wolf. Um, I, I've kind of like when I first I remember hearing Remy Wolf. I think it was on one of her EPs. Um, where stuff like Disco Man on it, um, photo ID stuff like that. It was just like an immediate hit of just energy, fun, personality, just 
like all thrown together and just like shaken about and it just like the result was just this almost just this like technicolor glorious mess that came out of it uh and mm. sounded amazingly good and ever since then she's just been on absolute form releasing track after track um like just nailing it at every turn we've played a bunch um on the show like monte carlo uh i remember being one that was particularly great uh and has kind of i guess quickly gone into a debut album uh and that is and that is juno and wonderful to see and all of that energy has has come together into i don't know just a really fun energetic and just like personality filled debut album that you can't help but smile at like you just can't help but get involved in everything it's uh yeah yeah a definitely. real amazing one and i think it's mad like you say it was quick for the debut album and it feels like this has been written for you know what i mean this feels mm, so mm. perfect and so every like the eps and this all feel like she had completely worked out exactly who like who Remy Wolf was and what yeah. that was about way, way before these were done. Uh, mm. And it is mad that this is debut <clears throat> album. I had to check that when I saw it because I was yeah. like, no way. Like that first yeah, set that yeah, came yeah, out was yeah. so polished. It's like, wow, that was like pre-debut. Uh, yeah. So yeah, love this album. Love how absolutely bonkers it is. Uh, and just, mm. just love Remy Wolf. It's just yeah. the attitude alone would carry it even without the tracks, which are very, very good. Like just her... Yeah whole vibe is so perfect and so unique like there's no yeah, i, I yeah, literally don't true. know what you would compare it to at all yeah yeah that, that, i think that's literally it there's no one i feel out there right now doing what remy wolf is doing and, that, and that's quite hard because there is such this i don't know this large group of kind of like musicians that are kind of coming through with this like fizzing fun new sound but remy wolf sounds completely on her own it's like this this completely like off kilter version of pop which is just like we're just gonna go for it have fun throw it in there and it the result is just like yeah an amazing amazing mix um, this is an album that could only have been made by someone that looked at the possibility of calling their fans the wolf pack and decided to call them rem jobs instead <laughs> that sums it up that sums You're this album up correct. so perfectly yeah just dives on in and just like continue just to go like yeah why not whack that in why not add these samples in why not add in just like even like weird moments of just random conversations chucked in mm. um and the and the result is just yeah an amazing amazing collection the fact that you can do that without i don't know like a bunch of tracks that we'd heard that you know we'd heard before that were like amazing big singles and she's like yep that's done i've got all these new ones as well so the result is an amazing yeah an amazing one let's let's have a listen to one such song uh this is liquor store by remy wolf Indeed. Um, the one, the one comparison I can I can make is maybe MIA, maybe um, just for this kind of I don't know genre splicing sort of sound really. But even then, completely different. Yeah, is that if yeah, if you had to cast around for something, that's the thing, isn't it? Is is it's yeah, you end up just basically pointing at other people that have been completely outside the box and been like, well, yeah. it's not like that, but it's kind of the same style as that right yeah, spirit maybe like yeah. same sort of spirit of it which is just like i'm just like here i've got all these ideas i'm bringing them all together and like you're either with me or against me and the result is everyone's with her um it's such like a i don't know like a really proud album uh really bold and like you know, at the same time t tackling like really like i don't know personal issues here um really like you know it, this isn't just an album that's just purely there just like way here we go like if you actually you know listen in you can hear like you know there's some real like i don't know like important talking points here you know there's stuff you know about you know alcohol addiction there's stuff about um well, she she it, said it, uh you know that that was a thing that went before the foot before the debut they uh had yeah. to deal with alcohol addiction right so uh yeah yeah yeah, that, yeah, yeah. It's, it's like you say it's not a shallow album just because it is no. kind of the equivalent of a firework display all happening at the same time yeah i think that's what you want i, I guess i don't know in in new 
I guess, pop stars, for lack of a better term, is you kind of want people who, I don't know, aren't afraid to kind of be open and share these kind of stories, but also do it in a, like, does it in a way which is more, I don't know, like celebrate, like celebratory in the fact of look where I am now. Um, very and like, also, positive. like it's, it's that kind of thing where I think you'd sort of get trapped in being like, this is a serious song, therefore it mm. must be slow and yes. maudlin and not as fun to listen to. Yeah. And it's like, well, I mean, you can make something fast paced without making it like fun or throwaway. And yeah. this is such a good example of that because yeah, like, as you say, there's there's so much in this that is worthy of talking about, and like they haven't just gone, well, we better do it with an acoustic guitar, really slow, then, and not at all <laughs> yeah, my yeah, style. Yeah. yeah, no, that's that's literally yeah, and I just think it's just got such, it's such a like just fizzing album. The best way I can describe it is it is like just a big bottle of like fizzy pop that is just it's just full of energy, full of it's sugars. Like, like those old videos where you, put, where you put a Mentos in a bottle of Coke. Yeah, yeah, yes. That is that's literally it. Um and it's just like it just what well, just goes everywhere. You can't mm. you can't stop it. Just embrace it. Uh, and yeah, I, just, I think it's just really exciting that Remy Wolf has come along. You know, in a year where we've already had so many, I don't know, brilliant pop albums, brilliant new pop or alt pop, whatever you want to put it, artists, that you've got someone like Remy Wolf who can come along and be completely different and just like still be so amazing and not have to follow the, the pack sometimes. Yeah, you know? 100%. It's, it's completely different, completely new, and uh, a huge fan. It's it's probably one of the funnest albums of the year. You know, most fun. I'm gonna turn that on at the parties that I go to on a regular basis because that's what I do. I go sure. to yeah parties and uh -huh. play play music at the parties because it's still that's... a party if no one turns up, even when you've invited them. Isn't that right, Jamie? <laughs> yes. Ye yeah, yeah. Let's have a listen to another Remy Wolf song. This is uh, Volcano. That was Remy Wolf, uh, an amazing album. Juno out now. Go pick up a copy. Go pick up a copy of Dork this month for uh, another amazing chat as well. Go pick um, up a ticket to uh, the bingo, your local bingo hall. Just go buy everything um, and forever shout out Remy Wolf for calling her fans uh, the Rem Jobs because yes. that is something we now have to refer to every single time. Um, Incredible stuff. Incredible by Remy Wolf. Um, oh, okay, right. Um, yeah. You don't um, have to do it. You can do whatever you want. But <coughs> the fans at home will okay, be disappointed. Of the week. That was quite nice, yeah. Thanks. I went for the Alid Jones that time. Um, <sighs> sure. <laughs> Shout out, Alid Jones. Your fucking references sometimes, <laughs> man, honestly. Uh, look about Alid everyone. Jones. <laughs> Alid Jones. Alid Jones Michael. in 2021. What's he doing? Oh, I don't Is know. He, uh... I'm not with him. <laughs> check in, see how he's doing. Uh, Jake, do you want to start us off this week with a... Uh... What's he doing? A tweet. After Ooh. Alan Jones, of course. What's he doing? Oh, I don't know. <laughs> What's he done? <laughs> I don't know. Just says he was investigated by the BBC. Oh. Oh, no, he was then resumed presenting after that, so I guess it was fine. Doesn't really say what he's doing now. Yeah. He well, is Christian, though. So there shout you go. out Christianity in that case. Yes. Let's. <laughs> uh, tweets. Right, here's a tweet. Yes. Yes, uh, go. So, C-Matt, friend of the show. Yes, yeah, uh, yeah, 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 big friend of the show. Has, has tweeted, 
<laughs> I once right so this someone's tweeted about Seabright Arms of and course. they've replied I once aggressively wrestled a karaoke microphone off a man in there because he was not doing a good enough job of the rap in Kids by Robbie Williams. Uh, right. Which is an excellent, excellent tweet in itself. But, Jamie, I believe you have a bit more <laughs> to add to this. Um, I, I can confirm that the, 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 um, the man who was uh, aggressively, uh, aggressively wrestled um, like away from a microphone was, was actually me. That was actually me. That was genuinely an event that happened uh, in real life at the Seabright Arms. It actually um, happened on a night when I was there. And yes. then it got to you saying, I've signed up for karaoke. And uh, I was like, right, I'm I'm going home now. You did. That was I when left. you left. That was uh, when you left. Yeah. Um, yeah, you uh, got out of there. You missed this moment. This is Seabright Arms in East London. And one of Fontaine's DC was DJing. That's correct. Uh, C-Mac yep. was there. And part of Just Mustard and part of Murder Capital were also there. Uh, Kojak was also there. Yes. So Ireland had decamped to the Seabright yeah. Arms for some reason. And I thought in front of all of those musicians uh, that this was a good moment for me to uh, try and do Kids by Robbie Williams. Um, let, let me let me lay out some more of the story here. So it was me and my friend Phoebe who went and did it. And we were like, okay, we're going to do it. We got halfway through kids, right? Bearing in mind, this is, you know, half midnight, let's say, right? On a Friday night, right? We're, mm. we're tired. Yeah. Um, got halfway through kids. The machine shut down. It fell apart. So it took ages. So they had to then reboot it again. So then did the half of kids or that already had done by that point again mm. at that point now i'm thinking yeah no i'm i think i'm done here with this this is not um my energy had sapped um from this from this version uh course, from yeah, the heady heights it had been out before of course it was it was a, a brimming um cauldron of energy at the start uh, and now that cauldron was dry with just the trickles at the bottom uh and so it got to the end and i was like right there we go that's the end i forgot because this is it. Some versions did have the rap. Some didn't. Just want to clarify. Right. Just want to clarify. And you gambled. Uh, I gambled and went, I'm done here. I'm over this. Uh, then the rap appeared on screen. And I was like, oh, shit. And I kind of just looked and I was like, um, that, like, that, that, I guess. In the hope, I don't know, there was a mass sing-along would emerge. Uh, so still, I was like, no, nope, this isn't happening. It's all the words coming up. The instrumental was playing. I turned to my side and through the crowd, like, like Moses parting the Red Sea uh, is the best way I can describe it. <laughs> CMAT emerges dives to the front grabs the microphone and proceeds to turn around from the words and just do the rap in full no questions asked from the top of her head and uh, just just destroyed the place uh, and then <laughs> put the mic down and was done and I was there thinking wow that was uh, truly, Special. truly phenomenal, uh, and I'm glad that that memory the personal lived on. touch that not a lot of superstars would give us. No, 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 it's there to save us uh, when we when we're stuck wondering what to do with the <laughs> the rap of Robbie Williams' kids. It could only be C Map who um, who could do that. Um, so it was wonderful stuff. Um, also did an amazing version of "If It Makes You Happy" um, later on uh, that night. So um, basically, Shout if, you're out. Gonna, if you're going to do karaoke, make sure C Mat is there. Um, next time C Mat comes on the show, maybe we'll just do karaoke instead. That's what everyone yes, would want. Please, right? and then after that, we can record the show. <laughs> yes, let's do that. Um, with that in mind, uh, let's let's yes, C Mat to rest yes. to care. That's the song. That's my job. I've done it now. Which 
Incredible stuff. Incredible stuff. See Matt again. A legend. Um, coming soon to a karaoke bar near you. Um, able to pick up all the slack, um, which is much appreciated. Uh, let's move on to. We've got one more tweet. One Jake. more tweet. Wow. Just like the uh, format. Incredible. <laughs> this one is from regular tweeters courting. <laughs> The only way I can describe them now. Yes. <laughs> at this yep. point, uh, again, we've mentioned this before. You, bands, if you want to get on this show, get better at tweets. Because trust me, there's not a lot out there. Uh, Courting <laughs> have tweeted um, basically like screenshots of uh, their genius, I guess, lyric interpretation on uh, on Spotify. Uh, I've often says, wondered with these when you go on Spotify and yeah. the genius things as like from the artist. Can you? Can anyone do that, or do they have to approach you to do it? Um, because it, it's, it's never yeah. clear whether it's because it's normally like people that are quite big, so it's never clear whether you have to reach a certain threshold before you can do it, or whether it's just like a, look, whoever wants to do it, fair game. So, what has this proven to you? Be my this answer. has proven it's the second of those two things. <laughs> shout out! Shout out! Shout out, Shout out Friends of the show. Friends of the, the show. Boys. The boys, the legends. Uh, um, Sean from Courting actually messaged me the other day oh yeah, uh, saying, saying, when are you having us back on the show? I want to have a really big fucking chat with you. Uh, <laughs> and I said, That's well, so right. intimidating. Yeah. Uh, yeah, so I just what? sort of put it. I said, I said, look, next time you've got an album or something. Because it sounded like too much. Sean, if you're listening, you came on too strong. <laughs> yeah, you did. And a big fucking chat with you. Yeah, I think that was the phrase. It was what something like do? that. Something that sounded a bit like, you know, he was going to talk about how we're getting a divorce or something. Yeah, yeah, yeah. I'm not happy with your behaviour, mate. Yeah, uh, honestly. That's what it sounds like. Uh, obviously, courting, they'll be back sooner than later. Um, yeah, trust, well, trust us. Whether we want them or not. <laughs> exactly. Like, on this tweet, though, um, they've obviously, so the genius thing kind of like lays out the lyrics. So the lyrics, lyrics are... But if you stream Shape of You, you're going to hell, and that's a promise. There's then a behind the lyrics, which is from Genius as well, that says, mm-hmm. that was a little dig at Ed Sheeran's 2017 hit, Shape of You, if you didn't know. And then the PS to Resistance. What's the third image? The third image is you get then the artist can comment on what that lyric is, uh, and they've just put, bad song, full stop. <laughs> full stop, yeah. <laughs> And it's in such a huge box. There's so it's much huge. space for more. They're expecting like an essay of deep meaning and all they've got was bad song, full stop. Mm. Uh, is uh, what, what do you make of that song, Jake? Do you agree with Yeah, calling? it sucks, obviously. Uh, <laughs> obviously. And that's well, it's why... it's fine. No, yeah, I mean, thing you is, know. thing is with like Ed Sheeran is like a lot of these... Like, it's not actually bad. It's just pretty boring and then you hear it far too much. Like if I heard mm. Shape of You once, I'd be like, yeah, fine. Then if someone played it to me like they did via car windows, supermarkets, <laughs> adverts, Any everything event ever, yeah, four yeah, yeah, million yeah. times. Even if it was a song I liked, I'd want to drill nails through the artist's <laughs> face. So I mean, they are they are on the point there, um, and I think with that in mind, we should we should honor um, yeah. honor them by playing their favorite song. What do you think? Yes, this is Courting's favorite song of all time. This is for you guys. Uh, this is. Ed Sheeran with Shape of You. I'm in love with your body. Last night you were in my room. Now my bed she smell like you. Every day discovering something brand new. I'm in love with your body. 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 What a song, eh? I'm in love with your body. You know, Ed Sheeran uh, is a big fan of the show. Is he actually? Yeah, prove me wrong. Oh. <laughs> That's a fair, fair point, actually. Yeah, yeah. <laughs> Should we tweet him? Ed, <laughs> like the show? Uh, we'll see from there. We'll see from there. Oh, dear. But, um, I mean, that comes that comes to an end. What a, what a roller coaster of a show we've had here. New it's music, been a lot. albums, Ammo and the Sniffers, Jake and the Other Sniffles. Stuff. Yep. Um, we talked about Coldplay, touring, um, Save yeah, the they Trees. Were there for the show. You don't have to sum up the show. <laughs> a little recap for you oh, at the have end. Have you got any you know? predictions for the next week, Jamie? Uh, yeah. Um, God, what's going to happen? I reckon like, I'm going to eat about eight cheese sandwiches next week. Just yeah. feel like that's what 
where I'm heading. Um, I haven't had a proper cheese sandwich in probably multiple years. Just cheese. But, yeah, yeah, just cheese. Cheese, two, two slices of your finest white bread. <laughs> so it's like white bread and then yeah. butter and then like solid butter. Well, maybe, maybe, maybe butter. Maybe I'll just put a slice of cheese in there. Um, Christ, that's horrible. That's like, desperate. You know, maybe, maybe the one with the holes in, just to oh, make yeah, me feel M&T like I'm in. Yeah, make me feel like I'm in a cartoon. That's um, that's what I might do. So yeah, I reckon if, I don't know what any other bands are going to do, but I just reckon we're going to have some cheese sandwiches. Uh, what about you, Jake? What, what, what do you reckon? I reckon happen? Jules Holland's going to get really into shisha, <laughs> and he won't stop going on about it. You know, people that like you know, oh, you're on a night out, and they're like, oh, should we get some shisha? That's going to be him, but on later life. <laughs> And all the way here from America, it's the Strokes and the Strokes. Do you want to get some shisha? Do you know? It's really so funny. Because he doesn't want to buy it all to himself, does he? No, he wouldn't. Like, he wanted to you share need a it. few people. Like that's <laughs> kind of the point, right? You got to pay extra for them to do all the stuff with it. So like he's gonna have to get involved. Some, you know. That's what just, I reckon. Can you imagine? He's like he's. Like, He's like, oh, this one's an apple flavor. Ooh. Yeah, exactly. You know, they do that. It was like, it was like, like OG vaping, wasn't it? Yeah, like, yeah back when, it was. Back when, it was. Back when yeah, synths yeah. were like huge and you had yeah. to fiddle with them constantly. That's that was what the synth was. That's what the shisha was to vaping. Pre vaping. It's like someone being really into vinyl, but for vaping. <laughs> the six music vape. <laughs> Steve. Steve Lamax vapor gout. <laughs> That's what he's carrying us around with him to gigs now. Oh, Bag of CDs and a shit <laughs> oak. Right, That's all we got time for this week. We have broken Jamie. Uh, thanks for listening. And, uh, and remember, if you're sharing shisha, make sure to wipe down the mouthpiece afterwards because you can transmit things like colds. Uh, God knows that's how I got my cold um, uh, and uh, and COVID too. Also, it is quite bad for you, so ease off, Jules, all right? <laughs>